This panel is about sustainable fashion and India being the second largest exporter of textiles and fashion garments in the world, we have a unique chance to create a new culture of sustainable practices with respect to the environmental impacts of the fashion industry. We have three very eminent and accomplished um, uh, people here to speak about it. Um, Ruchika Sachdeva, would you first, yeah, want to go on? So, I have a clothing brand called Bodice, and uh, we make clothes primarily for women and men. But also for us, it's like an approach through which we really question the mainstream ideas around clothing. Uh, what I mean by that is there's certain unsaid rules which intimidate all of us when it comes to dressing up. You know, that stress that happens before you go to somewhere really important. So our idea with Bodice was always to recognize those and question them. For example, what does it really mean to be masculine and what does it really mean to be feminine? What should you wear for a day event versus what should you wear for an evening event? What does it really mean to have a designer clothing, you know, because that definition is really varied. And what is luxury really? We also really like to question the impact that our creations have on um, the people making it and the people wearing it. And then how do you buy a garment of fashion? Can we take it away from frivolous consumption and make you approach it in a more wholesome manner so that what you saw was our store, uh, which is we've chosen not to have it in a mall or have it in a market area because we want people to almost engage with them differently. Because when you're gonna engage with garments in a way where they are sort of, you know, thousands of them in like a big store, you're going to start approaching them as something which is more disposable versus if you go to a place like this, you already start looking at them as something which you should value more, keep it for a longer time, something which is close to nature. So you're almost trying to direct at how it's made. Secondly, for us, making clothes is a lot more than just trends and design, which is what um, sometimes fashion can be, you know, fashion has a certain frivolous reputation, but actually it's a craft. And uh, design can be used to really approach a lot of problems. For example, we were just having a chat earlier and we were like, why don't a lot of dresses have pockets? You know, why do women have to always carry these things when, you know, you could easily, my pocket's actually coming out, when you could easily have pockets? Or even um, how can you approach longevity? What does it really mean to have a long lasting garment? Because, you know, like Marcus said, it's really about not throwing something away, you know, finding solution to not even having to throw something away. And that can happen if you really like a garment for a long period of time. Because if you tend to follow certain trends, have loud, loud prints or something which is very off the moment, then there's a chance you're going to get bored of it next year and then probably want to buy something else to remain relevant. Uh, because clothing is how we choose to express ourselves. So we at Bodice, we choose to also have uh, more longer lasting kind of colors, which means that they're slightly more earthy. Um, also, the by questioning how many elements we put into our design, we really like to increase the life of the garment so that they're more classic and linear and lesser trend-based. So, yeah, I think that's kind of what we do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll come to um, Rishika a little later. So, Priyanka. Priyanka is not a designer per se by herself, but she supports um, the uh, sustainable fashion industry. Thank you. All right, so let's skip the first slide. I don't know how to bring it back. Um, but yes, like, uh, like Rajshri mentioned, um, I'm not a designer. Fashion for good doesn't do anything with design. We're actually an ecosystem space. We are actually facilitators of good design in the fashion industry. Fashion for good, uh, yes. So actually we are an initiative that was started in 2017 with the goal of making the fashion industry good. And when we say good here, I think all of us today are aware that fashion industry is probably one of the largest polluting industries in the world. For the amount of energy that's used, for the amount of water that's completely destroyed because of all the chemicals that is put into the industry, for the whole amount of waste that is generated because Everyone wears an outfit, what, 
10, 20, if you're lucky, 30 times, and it's disposed. And if a few facts are to be believed, we have an average person has more than 70% of their wardrobe unused. Complete, absolute waste just lying in our wardrobes, which we don't look at assets at all. So we were started as an initiative uh, to actually counter all of this, to actually reimagine the way the fashion industry works and see where the intervention could be, where we can drive more sustainability. And what we realized is fashion industry is massive. Um, the whole supply chain is so huge that there's no one solution that's possible for the fashion industry. So we kind of mapped it as parts or verticals in the supply chain, starting from raw materials, spinning, weaving, dyeing, cutting, make, trim, retail, and actual end of use. So what happens to a garment at end of use? And once we divided this, we kind of realized where the big biggest challenges were. For example, in raw material space, the current raw materials that we use, raw materials like cotton, a kg of cotton uses more than 3,000 3, liters of water to produce one kg. That's almost like a T-shirt or two, maybe. 3,000 liters of water, especially in a country where we are running out of water or clean water globally to drink. Similarly, at the dyeing space, one of the biggest challenges that India faces, the chemical, the hazardous chemicals that come out of the industry just in the dyeing process are massive. If you look at Delhi, a city that I'm from, most of the water we drink is contaminated and it's all going into our system. And then if you look at end of use stage, once these clothes are washed or discarded, it does end up in landfills. What happens after that? We've heard this earlier today. Microplastics all go into the oceans potentially and eventually come into our bodies. So that's kind of the bigger challenges that we mapped around the industry. So Fashion for Good was created with two aspects in mind. On one side, we look at the, on this side, on the left side if you see, is we are a convener of change. We actually run the first sustainable fashion museum of the world in Amsterdam. We are a Netherlands-based company. Um, it is one of the most fantastic places for consumers to come and get aware on what are the challenges in the industry and also what commitments you could make. But it's also all the industry, like all of the bigger brands in the world come to this museum, send their teams to this museum to try to understand what are the challenges they're facing and how they want to counter it. And of course, we do a lot of reporting work on the convener of change side. But what I consider the real core or the heart of our platform is our innovation platform, where we encounter a lot of innovations throughout the supply chain. For example, in the previous slide, like I mentioned, we look at newer raw materials. We look at how do we replace materials like polyester and cotton. We look at bast fibers, we look at banana fibers, how do they make them scalable. We look at products made out of algae and bacterial garments. So very, very revolutionary technologies on that end. Um, and we take these innovations through our scaling and accelerator programs and support them with funding <clears throat> to actually help them incorporate with existing big brands. We work with 13 of the largest brands in the world. Um, when you see the 13 corporate partners there, we work with Calvin Klein, um, Tommy Hilfiger, which is PBH. We work with Adidas. I know an example came about Adidas uh, shoes earlier. We also have them displayed in our museum. Um, it is avoiding ocean plastic, and yes, there is some messaging definitely there, but uh, these are things that we focus on with our brands. Um, and of course, we have CNA. In India, we have now Arvind Mills as one of our first partners in the region, and we have a few more joining in very soon. And then we've done about 40 plus pilots, including two really great pilots in India, which I'll talk about later. Uh, and we've raised more than 80 million euros for these innovations to help them scale into the industry. The way we measure this is impact to the supply chain overall, like how much carbon can be reduced, how much water has been reduced. So we have a full impact measurement st structure around it also to see with every innovation that we try to scale up in the industry, what is the kind of impact we've created. So yeah, actually, if you look at uh, value proposition for fashion for good, mainly we look at anything that's disruptive in the industry, and which is why we're here, because India has so much potential that has not really tapped till now. Then we validate it through pilots, driven with the corporate partners, so with the manufacturers, with the main brands, and then, of course, we look at how we can possibly adopt or scale these into the supply chains, which means a lot of funding, a lot of other support required, which is what we focus on. So yeah, we've, we've actually mapped the entire innovation <coughs> landscape in the industry. 
Um, we've met about 1,700 plus uh, disruptive technologies so far. Um, we've identified in every vertical what is the kind of disruptions that's available. That's why we are looked upon as a knowledge hub all over the world. So just things to share. And uh, just these, this slide kind of just not very relevant here, which talks about 80 plus innovations that we've already brought into our programs and help scale with all the funding. I'd like to talk about maybe one or two of the companies that we are working with, particularly um, Sea Change Technologies here, which is a company which is helping us drive. Uh, it's kind of redesigning the way a wastewater is treated in India. And uh, it's working with Arvind Mills, Adidas, and PVH, um, and doing a pilot to completely reduce the slush that comes out so that there's no chemical discharge in the water. Uh, we're doing we're doing another pilot in India with BEX360, which is actually a blockchain-based technology, which is mapping what happens to your, to your outfit that you're wearing from farm level, all the way from where the cotton is grown, to end of use. So I should, using tracers, be able to know exactly where my T-shirt comes from and what is the impact of this one T-shirt that I'm working on. So similarly, very, uh, some very cool technologies that are mentioned here, uh, one of them being my, uh, bringing products fiber as well as uh, dyes out of my microalgae. So lots of interesting companies that we work with. But yeah, our real focus is to like, drive collaborative innovations. Our messaging to everyone is the more we can get companies together, and industry together, to drive pilots and implementation, that's the only way we see the industry changing. That's the only way we will drive sustainability or circular economy in the industry. So yeah, I think that's it. These are just a couple of the brands that we work with. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Priyanka. And now I'm very pleased to um, introduce Jainti Reddy. Jainti Reddy label is Telangana's uh, homegrown brand. Uh, so, Jainti. Thank you. Thank you, Rajshri, for having me on this panel today. And firstly, hats off to India Design Forum and the Telangana government for putting Hyderabad Fashion Week, had Hyderabad Design Week together. As most of you here today are probably aware, Sustainability is probably one of the most pressing issues of our time. I feel like every organization, every industry, and every one of us individually feels a certain responsibility to practice sustainable measures in a meaningful way. I am a part of the fashion industry, but I've never believed in the notion that fashion is supposed to be short-lived and uh, seasonal. I think it should be something that transcends time and something that can be treasured for years. Here are a few of the ways that I um, have moved towards more sustainable practices in my organization and some of the challenges that I still face. These pictures you see are of vegetable dyed prints, which basically don't use any harmful chemicals in the process of dyeing. Um, some of the challenges are that this fabric is extremely expensive, it's very laborious and time consuming. And it also took me a very, very long time to um, convince my prospective buyers of the quality and the price as well. However, um, a lot of leftover pieces and swatches of this fabric have been used by my organization as an experiment to put them together and make patchworks. And very surprisingly, it turned out to being one, like a one-of-a-kind, very sought-after design. But another challenge is it's something like this can never be repeated. So these are some of my weavers that I work with in Banaras. I've also worked with a lot of people who work on chicken curry embroidery. I've worked with Mrs. Shabana Azmi's um, NGO in Lucknow as well. So coming back to Banaras weaves, I use them a lot in my bridal fashion as well. And I think Banarasis are more sustainable in the way that they can be reused, they can be worn for generations to come. And at the same time, I feel like I'm also reviving a part of the craft and also providing employment and livelihood to, all, to multiple weavers in Banaras. I also am trying to make bridal fashion and occasion Indian wear something that is more versatile, something that can be worn multiple times. I also do make a lot of embroidered heavy lengas, but I always encourage my clients and my brides to buy a second option, which is much more easy to wear, a much simpler, uh, you know, maybe a knotted shirt or something simple that they can reuse and wear that same lenga again in multiple ways. These are some of the weavers and the work that they do. This is actually my particular designs being woven on the looms right here. 
And uh, being in the fashion industry, we have a lot of fabric waste. And as you can see, I've made little embroidered bags that we resell. A lot of brides buy them as well. The center picture is of little hand embroidered tassels, which are used as latkans on our bridal lehengas as well. And all this is made out of fabric waste. And in fact, a very dear friend of mine, Malika Reddy, who has launched her brand called Cancelled Plans, is also a part of this forum. And she basically uses the unused. And I look forward to starting a collection with her where the raw material for her brand is going to be supplied by my organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jenti. Um, uh, Ruchika, at a time when um, Indian fashion has been dictated by excessive use of material, excessive use of embellishments, um, I'm, I'm curious to know um, how you made a success of your brand bodice because your, your, your styling is very simple, very clean lines and um, androgynous in structure, which is very untypical of Indian fashion and Indian um, style and design and Indian aesthetics basically. Um, yeah, so when I started, basically, like I said, my procedure or my idea of thinking is always to question how things are being done and see if they can be done slightly differently. Uh, because to be very honest, just to make beautiful clothes can be a little bit boring for me. And just to make my work more exciting for myself, I try to, I mean, this might sound arrogant, but like a lot of us, you know, over a period of time do the same thing and it starts to be like, why am I doing what I'm doing? So at the time that I started, I looked at the market and I realized that there was a lot being used in each and every garment. And where we are really questioning the impact that our choices are having on the environment, I really started to think whether we really need to put all of that on the clothes. So it was really just an idea of questioning how much is enough. Do the designer clothes really need to have so much happening out there? And also it was another conflict because I was an Indian designer and this is what was kind of expected out mm. of me. And, but I wanted to, I did want to seek inspiration from my roots in order to stay authentic, but I thought that could inspiration from India come from somewhere else? Could it come from a place of more like spirituality or meditation, <laughs> which really focusing on reduction of elements? Could we really look at Gandhi and look at what he did with Khadi and like, you know, it was a really singular garment. So the idea was to get the inspiration from places which were more uh, almost uh, thought out, you know, where you're really questioning each and every element that goes into your garment. It was really difficult in the beginning when I started, but I think it's a matter of educating uh, the customer. And I think, honestly, it was just a matter of it not being available before. I feel like the the women, were, they were seeking it. They wanted to celebrate every day versus just looking good when they went for a wedding. So mm. it was almost a matter of putting it out there, convincing the stores to invest in it. And then eight years down the line, I feel like I see a lot of other Indian designers doing this, which is quite encouraging for me. Yes, it must have been a wow moment when uh, you received the Woolmark, Woolmark Prize. I mean, that's a very big deal. And I think you got about 135,000... 200,000 um, uh, pounds um, for the Woolmark Prize. Was that, that, did that make you feel endorsed and continue to do the kind of work you're doing? Yes, absolutely. Like, it's a recognition and any kind of recognition is very encouraging. It makes you feel like uh, you should continue doing what you're doing. And uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience to get a little bit of funding because as an independent designer, it can be very hard to grow. And we've always chosen to grow very organically because uh, again, it's about questioning how fast you're going and what you're doing with the speed, but it was really very helpful. Um, Jainti, you are not a designer by training. Yes. <laughs> okay, you did your business administration studies. Right. And you grew up here in Hyderabad. Um, what made you um, uh, take up fashion? It came to me very suddenly, to be honest, Rajshri. I mean, I've, I've always loved fashion. I've loved dressing up. My mother's been extremely creative, and I think that's where I got it from. I've, uh, you know, even as a 
even when I was a student, when it came to anything creative, I'd always do it with much more interest. And then one day I worked with my dad for a while and one day I just thought, why not? Let me just try. And I really thought it was going to be as a hobby, but I got great recognition in the first few months or one year, I would say, which made me realize this is probably going to be it. And there was no looking back ever since. Well, you've made it uh, very big. I must say that, um, um, you know, um, uh, you know you, your, your presence at the Lakme Fashion Weeks and, you know, uh, sharing uh, center stage with very established designers uh, doing the genre of work that you're doing right. is very credible what you've achieved. Um, uh, Priyanka, uh, if I'm to understand right, um, you know, you support sustainable fashion and you actually set up a circular economy to establish that fashion is done in a certain, um, uh, conducted in a certain manner using ethical practices. You also have a fund that invests in fashion startups. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about that? On the investment side, um, actually our fund doesn't support startups. It supports mid-segment manufacturers. Uh, particularly not the top ones, but the ones who have the potential and the inclination towards investing in sustainable technology, but do not have the capital or don't make the best case investments for venture capitals. So it's actually a debt fund. Um, we give this investment about one to five million uh, euros, but it's really focused on if you could look at one of the innovations you're working in and invest or incorporate that in your supply chain. So it's really us enabling the entire industry to say, here's some investment, try to now create a more sustainable aspect of the supply chain. Okay, this word sustainable fashion or sustainability in business practices, sustainable seems very, very, uh, a, a word that is used very uh, randomly these days. What estab establishes or measures sustainable fashion? Do we have some index? I was just reading about uh, uh, Deloitte report of 2013 that says that fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world because the fashion apparel and the uh, footwear and accessory industry uses a lot of water, is uh, polluting with uh, toxic effluents and um, uh, certain um, business um, uh, practices of, um, you know, um, not treating the craftsmen with the kind of um, respect. So I think um, it, uh, last question to all of you. So uh, how do you think you're a sustainable fashion? I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm a sustainable fashion brand, but we do make efforts to try and reduce the impact of what we do. I mean, it's quite embarrassing when people say, oh, you're a fashion designer. You know, it's one of the most, uh, uh, polluting industries, but I also see it as an opportunity to be able to make an impact in one of those uh, industries. So how what we do, the small things that we do is we only use uh, natural fibers, which means that we don't use any polyester based fabrics. After that, we do a lot of natural dyeing um, and we also have, we're constantly looking for things that are recycled, upcycled. Recently, we worked with a facility where we provided them with our katran, which is basically scrap fabric, and we wove it together on a hand loom to basically make a fabric out of the side cut, um, you know, waste pieces of the fabric. We make patterns in a way that they are very easy and simple to assemble so that there's not so much waste. Again, by really measuring the amount that is going into each garment and really focusing on form and function, we try and ensure that there's as little... Um, you know, waste as possible. We also, for example, make all of our packaging bags out of leftover fabrics. We try and make sure that we are using uh, renewable energy wherever possible. So we have a lot of solar panels installed in our production facility. We make sure that we pay our um, wages fairly. I think that's very important. Coming from a place of textiles, it's a responsibility, honestly. Um, not something special we do, but we obviously work with a lot of hand-woven fabrics. We engage with a lot of age-old craft and tradition and techniques where we look at them, we learn from them, and we see how we can take them beyond and outside India also. So it's not just limited to a certain kind of customer who already engages with craft, but how can we widen it and take it outside of that limited customer base and make it more covetable 
for a woman who wants to wear it every day. A lot of our garments actually have detachable hems, which means the pleats can be taken off. But our effort is to make sure that it doesn't look gimmicky or too technical for a woman to actually want, because the most important thing is that it should also be covetable and desired. Um, what else do we do? We try and make sure that we make these kind of uh, <laughs> small efforts. We also, one thing that we do is we take our dead stock and we cut it out and we make it into new garments, which are one of its kinds. So we really, from our own small way, fully question uh, how can we do it better as much as possible. We have a compost in our, in our studio. We have, um, we grow our own vegetables and use that compost for that. And then uh, we also, yeah. Okay, I think <laughs> you've done quite a bit. And Jainti, you're using lots of um, exquisite craftsmen and craftsmanship in your most elegant uh, 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 designs. So are you um, working with a certain craft community? What are the CSR activities, if so, that um, your brand is um, doing? So it's not a certain community per se. For example, the, the chicken curry weavers that I worked with was from Shabana Azmi's NGO. So I kind of felt like I revived that craft a little bit and provided livelihood to most of them. And even within my organization, I provide direct employment to almost 150 people and maybe another 75 people indirectly also through vendors and other people. And um, we also... Uh, provide a lot of our fabric waste to orphanages and other organizations also, which I feel they use to make certain things and they resell them also. So yeah, it's not any particular form of organization, but it's just, yeah. So Priyanka, um, the question of, are you monitoring this, uh, and anyone monitoring this sustainability in fashion? Is there any kind of uh, indices? Right. So. Um, there are a lot of organizations which are actually um, working on the measurement side. There is sadly no one such tool. There are quite a few actually. The Sustainable Apparel Coalition has a Higgs Index. There are a lot of measurement aspects, but nothing has been defined worldwide as the key standard. Um, having said that, for our, particularly the companies that we work with, or the, uh, from the designer to the technology side that we work with, we try to do our own impact measurement. And for us, like, because you asked what is sustainability, I think the key factors that come out is, well, of course, your CO2 emission, uh, emissions, but it's mainly water, uh, waste created, as well as use of virgin resources, or no use of virgin resources, and of course, energy. So these four, I think, become the four principles that we go by. So if you're working on innovations which are helping drive these or reduce these, I think then that's when we support the companies more. But of course, it's, it's amazing to hear that so many brands here are doing so much more, and all of these activities do count. But I think eventually there will be a measurement tool around it also, so you're able to then discover your own emissions as well as where you need to be. Then you can measure and monitor yourself around it. Um, I'm curious, are the large fashion houses um, that we see all over the world, are they... Um, there is always this um, contradiction of, uh, uh, you know, these are the bad boys of uh, fashion because they are the largest pollutants. And um, if you're ethical, have ethical business practices, you're not necessarily profitable. So the industry is always um, having to face this uh, kind of a conflict. So you, you are handling and advising many of these large fashion business houses. What are your comments on this? Um, because sustainability per se is not one space to reach. I think it's a journey. Um, and many brands nowadays, including small and large, are somewhat at a really early part of discovering what sustainability means to them. And it has been very subjective to each company right now. And some of them are much more advanced on their sustainability journey and are exploring not just social side, but also environmental and measuring a lot what is happening internally. Um, I think we, we've had the pleasure of working across the board, um, somewhere where we need to add a lot more learning, but there are also brands who are very mature in their sustainability journey and are teaching us or what the focus areas should be. So it is very internal. You can't say that XYZ brand is good or bad. Um, I think it's really now going forward, you have to see what kind of measures they are doing. 
There is still a lot of um, what you call greenwashing in the market, but um, there are also a lot of brands who are making some, who are doing a lot of investment, investment and making some real efforts and headway into implementing sustainability within their supply chain. So recently, Ruchika, you were named amongst the top 500 fashion designers in the business of fashion. And um, you've received more accolades since then. Um, if you can update us and also, what is the larger picture for bodies? Where do you go from now? You've been very internationally recognized um, at a very young age and stage in your career. So we look at bodice um, as a culture, almost as an approach, and we hope, hope to take it uh, beyond clothing. We're already starting to make small products. Again, something that helps us communicate almost this philosophy that we follow. Um, Business of Fashion 500 actually is a community of people all over the world that are contributing to fashion. So it's not just designers, it's all sort of aspects. So it's really nice to be able to start a dialogue with them so that hopefully you get a slightly more, uh, slightly larger platform to be able to make a difference. And also we continue to, you know, really question the impact of what we are doing in terms of, you know, the water waste and everything. It's really nice to... We just, it's just a starting and like she said, it's a journey. We want to keep using the Indian elements also to provide a solution to certain things. For example, we work with uh, certain natural herbs like neem, for example, mm -hmm. to be able to provide a solution to storing garments. For example, in India, we have winter for a very little amount time, of time. Yeah. And a lot of our winter clothes actually go bad because they're natural. For example, in our case, we don't use any plastic in our fiber they tend to get eaten up by moths. So we developed this neem coating with Raymond's mm -hmm. uh, to be done on wool, to be able to you know, use more natural materials instead of chemicals, which would have obviously done the opposite again, mm -hmm. you know, by putting a chemical coating on a garment. And also, it's also educating the customer um, because a lot of people who actually do care a lot about uh, environment and they genuinely want to make an effort are actually not aware that uh, you know, there's polyester in their garments. A lot of time, they're not really looking at the tags. So constantly, we are, you know, thanks to people like you and Priyanka, we're getting platforms to really talk about it and be like, please question how much you're buying. You know, please look at the labels. And it's also having a conversation with people who are engaging um, with our product. So, like I said, with bodice, we don't just want to be limited to making more clothes, but almost have a wider conversation around what it means to make clothes and does it stay limited to only clothes or does it go beyond that almost as an aesthetic or a language? Thank you. And uh, Jainti, what next for Jainti Ready Label? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing specific. I do plan on expanding more internationally to be honest, which means I need to do, um, you know, more clothing which is not uh, bridal, I would say, something that's more wearable internationally. I also plan on getting into more of accessories, market them internationally, and also in small forms, um, do packaging, which involves my design as well. So that's what I have in store. So <laughs> Telangana is such a rich region of textile history, craftsmanship, and legacy, your ikats, and you know, the weaves of Telangana have been popular for centuries. And, um, and of course, the embellishment is from the, the, the Nizams and so on. So, um, uh, do you, do you uh, get your inspiration from, uh, from here? And when you say you want to expand internationally, uh, do you um, want to take this? Do you want to continue with this legacy to contemporize design, but using the rich heritage of what exists here? Absolutely, definitely. I am very, very inspired by the Nizami culture that we have here. And I definitely think I've probably, I've used that inspiration from almost the beginning of my career. And I do plan on using that as well, sticking to my heritage roots within India and taking that itself internationally. So Priyanka, would you invest <laughs> with both these brands? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish I could, uh, just support like that. Um, there's a process around it. <laughs> um, our, like I said, it's really focused on um, 
disruptive innovation and then plugging it with the manufacturing. Would these brands for me come as manufacturing side here and not on the, the innovation side? But I'm hoping that I would love to work with them and discover we, some of our innovations could potentially be plugged into their supply chain as well as the way they design. So yeah, hopefully we should work together. <laughs> Well, it's been wonderful, and um, um, if anyone has, we can take two questions to any of these wonderful ladies, yes? You have to make it really short. Yeah, please. Yeah, we can only take a maximum of two questions because, yes. Hello. You have to hurry up, thanks. This is Sudhir Siddharth from SAC Creatives. Uh, I'm curious and I'm looking for, for, forward for the future, which is an eco-friendly, fashion, but end of the day, we are in India, so 70% of the people will be spending less than 1,000 rupees to buy a trouser or else a shirt. Is this handmade or else eco-friendly costumes will be affordable to each and every set of the audience? I think, I'm not sure I got your question uh, completely, but I think what you're saying is we have a price constraint in India, True. and how can they afford eco-friendly fashion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, eco-friendly is still a subjective term. I think when you look at when fashion reaches where it should, which is to drive, uh, to be a full circular industry, I think price points do not change a lot because actually there's a lot of saving with circular economy. For example, right now, currently the way we are manufacturing, like uh, Ruchika mentioned, there's a lot of fabric waste. That fabric waste is actually also used in producing newer garments. So your feedstock need actually goes down. If you're doing more chemical recycling, you're actually bringing back the stuff that's already in mar market, which means your, a lot of your cost saving actually comes on, so which means that you actually don't have to. Currently, because it's such a small niche market, the pricing is going up. When mainstream brands come into it, I don't think it will go up so much. So that aspect will not change. And secondly, there are also newer business models that are coming for a consumer, circular business models, which could be e-commerce, which means a huge increase in second-hand market. Europe is seeing massive, massive, uh, almost 700% increase in second-hand market. We also think India will get there. India has already started. There are some very good platforms. There's also a rental market, which is really increasing. Um, again, it cuts down the cost of any product that you wear sometimes by one-fourth or one-fifth. There's also rework model, so you're able to get all of these newer outfits now actually at a much cheaper cost. So instead of India not being able to afford if the prices are driven up, the prices will be driven down, and newer, more creative models will enable people to buy more. Thank you. Yeah, can, um, I, can I ask the question? Maybe please? just one Sorry. very short question. Yes, please. Yeah, so um, I'm Tulika Gupta, Director of Indian Institute of Crafts and Design at Jaipur. My uh, question is to Priyanka, and I would like to compliment Richika on the work that you're doing. Uh, so Priyanka, I have two short questions. One, that, uh, you know, constantly we've been talking about fashion as only clothing. Fashion is not only clothing, it's a lifestyle issue. So are you, do of course, uh, as it says, fashion for good. Are you doing anything about the technological advances and the newer uh, phones that are changed every day and the newer kind of, uh, you know, laptops that are changed every day? Because that is also fashion. It's not only clothes. So when we say fashion industry is a polluting industry, uh, we're talking actually in a much larger sense. So that is one question. The second question is, are you also doing anything for consumer awareness? Because that is where it will end, if it has to end. You know, like how Gandhi motivated people to wear khadi. So that mass consumption ended, uh, you know. So these are my two questions. What, what are you doing? Because it's very interesting, fashion for good. But fashion itself is a contradictory word when it comes to sustainability. Yeah. Sure, so to answer your first question, um, yes, fashion could be into multiple industries, and there are many fantastic organizations working across the board. Our focus area is mainly textiles and accessories. Um, we work on home textiles, we work on apparel, as well as footwear and accessories, but that's the scope of our company. I wish we could do more, but I think there's enough problems to solve within this space for us. Um, and to answer your second question for the consumer awareness, in fact, uh, I'm not sure if you saw earlier on our presentation, we also work as convener of change, which is the two pillars that we work on. One is the innovation platform, the other is the convener of change. And convener of change really is consumer focus, which is why the first ever sustainable fashion museum in Amsterdam that I mentioned, uh, it attracts 
a couple of million people every year, and that number is only increasing now. Not just customers like you and I, but also companies sending their teams. So that's definitely a lot of commitment we create. I, I don't know the exact figure, but we have millions of people who've taken commitments through our interactive technology of purchasing better, questioning the brands of what they're doing, um, buying less but buying more sustainable. So that's more on the consumer end. But we understand that the reach of a museum is still very small and the world is huge. So that's where we engage with a lot of reporting work. Um, our last report was with Accenture. We are currently working on a report which should be coming out next year, beginning of India and the state of circular innovations in the apparel industry in India. So there's a lot of um, information generation work happening. And hopefully in platforms like this, we should be able to distribute those and create more aware customers. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, um, Ruchika. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jayanti. Thank you, Priyanka. And uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.